This is Grow Omaha Uncut, where you can watch our radio show, including what goes on in the commercial breaks. And be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Jeff Beals at your service, broadcasting live from the KFAB studio high above Underwood Avenue in beautiful downtown Dundee. Uh, the show is brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and D&M Roofing and Siding. Uh, this is the only show that focuses on the growth and development of the Omaha metropolitan area. And without any further ado, it's time to bring on my co-host, the legendary real estate deal maker himself, Trenton Maggot. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the house with Brad Williams. Welcome, Brad. Hey, thanks for having me back. And Brad's, everyone's like, but wait, Brad was on last week. But uh, we have Brad join us periodically, but he always joins us uh, when we have our quarterly call-in show. And it has nothing to do with the incriminating pictures of Jeff and I. And so we are doing our quarterly call-in show this week. The phone number is 402-558-1110. That's 402-558-1110. So if you have any questions about Omaha growth and development that you want to ask, today is the day we'll do that. we got to do our news here in, here in a moment, so we'll start taking those calls um, after the uh, first break in the hour. But write down the phone number, 402-558-1110. Brad, has it been a good week? It's been a great week. Uh Flew by like the rest of the summer has, and then last night went down to West Side and watched West Side just kill prep and football. What was the final score? Fifty-seven to seven. Wow. So uh, West Side are they about twenty-four and zero now? 20, well, one and zero this season. Right. Well, I understand. I, that. Oh, okay. I the don't, last two years they won though, right? Yeah, I don't know the exact. But they, yeah, they, they're, lot. they're dominant. Like when, yeah. like kind of went back when we were in school. Okay, a good run. Full full transparency, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to three West Side High School graduates. In so the house. For, so for all of you that went to Burke and Prep, please forgive us um, for uh, sometimes getting a little West Side-y on you. But Brad uh, Williams is with e Consulting and um, also Brad Williams Photography. And Brad, before we get into the news, you have a couple of art fairs coming up that yeah. people can meet you and see your products. The next two weekends in a row, next Sunday, uh, Labor Day weekend, is Hutch Fest down at Millwork Commons. That's from 10 to 4 on Sunday, the day before Labor Day. And then the following weekend is the like 56th, 57th annual Rockbrook Village Art Fair. Well, and you always have a nice uh, tent up or display. Yeah, I'll have, have the tent at both and have all my photos, so... Go to bradwilliamsphotography.com and kind of a preview of his talent and just amazing stuff. Plus, your a new uh, August 2023 construction video on the Grow Omaha um, page and on YouTube. Uh, amazing properties are on there. There's a lot of activity in our market. So, Brad Williams, we think you're the coolest. <laughs> Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's pretty damn cool. Well, yesterday was the Commercial Real Estate Summit. Trenton and I were both there, along with about a thousand other people. And this is an annual event. Uh, people who work in uh, anything related to commercial real estate, brokers, appraisers, developers, investors, lenders, architects, engineers. Attorneys. Yeah. The, the, any, uh, anyone that um, works in and around commercial real estate is apt to go to this event. And and so, Trenton, um, I kind of thought this morning, you know, what, what did we hear uh, during the event? And um, a couple things stood out. There was a panel, I, I thought the, the best part of the day was the, the panel at the end that included a lot of real estate development experts. We had a, a guy from Heinz Development, which is doing the Mercantile on the north side of the ConAgra campus. We had Arun Agarwal from White Lotus. Uh, we had Sam Noddle from Noddle Companies. Uh, there was a gentleman who uh, works for Mutual of Omaha who's leading Mutual's uh, efforts in developing the skyscraper. Um, we had uh, Dave Fanslaw, the city planning director, and and I enjoyed listening and to that. And also a national apartment developer. Oh yeah, a national apartment developer. And so I enjoyed listening to that group, and and you know they talked about some of the challenges that uh, we're facing with you know higher uh, interest rates, and of course continually escalating costs that have everything to do with with construction. But you know when I listened to those guys, it, it seemed um, uh, pretty optimistic. You know, uh, City Planning Director Dave Fanslaw was asked by moderator Jerry Slusky at one point um, about continued growth. And he's like, hey, we see it everywhere. I mean, everywhere he goes, we've got projects all over the place. Right. So I had a number of takeaways, but but the, the main ones, and I thought 
Arun Agrawal was very apropos, and he talked about, you know, we're talking about supply and building, and all these developers are building, building, building. So number one I thought was was interesting was, I think Sam Nottle brought it up, was about collaboration and, and developers, especially downtown, all those developers that are on the stage and, and that weren't on the stage need to be talking to each other because all their developments complement each other. Uh, White Lotus, uh, uh, which is Arun Agrawal's company, they have those nine acres that was the, the Civic Auditorium site. So they're talking to Noddle companies that's doing the Builders District and doing a pocket park there. And those are amenities for the White Lotus project at the Civic site. So, and and the back, um, the the Heinz project, the brick line on 10th Street, the old ConAgra campus, those are all intermingled and work together. And so they, they need to be talking to each other and complimenting each other, both verbally and in reality, those projects complement each other. And Arun was, was really on point when he said, you know, we talk about supply, we talk about all this project going on, but we need to talk about in migration. We, we need to talk about not just growing uh, holistically and organically, but we need, and, and this was, this is my mantra for everybody out there. And I want to talk to Rachel Jacobson who gave the, the keynote address during the luncheon who, and, and she is the head of uh, Heritage Omaha, the organization that has given billions of dollars to these parks and libraries and all kinds of public spaces. And if, it, but for the, 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 stakeholders in uh, Heritage Omaha, we wouldn't have half the stuff we have downtown and around Omaha. So my challenge to everybody that's listening is we spend all this money on uh, venues, on, on parks, on civic spaces and everything, but we need to put our money where our mouth is and our time and organization skills to not just grow organically in Omaha, but we need to, we need to reach out and maybe it's Maybe some of those, uh, you know, the Walter Scott Foundations, who he's been one of the top donors in this country or in the city for decades, but maybe a group gets together and says, okay, any family that moves to Omaha, maybe it's a $10,000 forgivable loan that uh, if you're here for a couple of years or something like that, you buy a house or you, you invest in the community. Because if we get one worker, if we get one person at ConAgra, we get one person at Mutual or any company – they bring their their spouse. They bring their kids. They bring. Um, they invest in daycares. They invest in the community. But wouldn't something like that work, guys? Where, where whether it's a forgivable loan, what kind of incentive? Because we need to attract people and not just wait for organic growth. You know, the question is: Do we do, at some point grow so fast that the 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 foundations that would put up some of that money would run out? Well, um, I mean, you can you can limit it. You know. <laughs> You know, as long as it's available or whatever. But and I'm not. I don't think we're going to live to see. Do that. We're not going to live to see o- Omaha be. If you look up the definition of, of of tertiary and secondary market, we'll be a tertiary market until we're gone. But I don't think we want two million people here. But it'd be nice to have a million three, you know, in the next twenty five thirty years. Yeah, I think that the main thing for cities to provide great quality of life and uh, to persist in their desirability is to have a healthy but not obnoxious growth rate. And so I would I would tend to agree with you. I guess the question I have is could we if we continue to build the amenities that we have here because there's way more we can do and if we continue to have great businesses and if we continue to have great social organizations my, my thought is we'll be able to get enough population growth without having to do anything too extraordinary because we've been going, you know, in, in the last couple of decades, right about 1% population growth every year, which puts us in the top half for fastest growing among the uh, 100 largest metro areas. And I've always kind of thought I'd like to see us about one and a quarter, maybe one and a half or something like that. For How long is that going to take, though? <clears throat> That's a good question. So, uh, Arun Agrawal said it best when he said Omaha missed an opportunity during COVID because that was the best time to highlight it. We kept our city open. All these cities on the coast, all these uh, primary and, and secondary markets that really shut down. The quality of life is, yes, we have four seasons. No, we don't have mountains. We don't have oceans. That's, that's okay, but we have uh, some of the hardest people – working. We have the most employment base as far as the, the unemployment is so small here, under 2% usually. So that can work against us. 
but there's no reason why we have to wait till people come here. We should be out there across the country getting people to look at Omaha and, and getting people in Omaha, engaging those around them to come here. Well, great discussion, but let's jump into the news uh, so we can uh, get a couple of stories in front of you. Uh, the news, of course, is brought to you by a Dingman's Collision. I'm sorry, Dingman's Collision Center is one of our title sponsors, along with the DNM Roofing and Siding. The news in particular, Eagle Mortgage. And Eagle Mortgage is led by our good friend, Holly Schneiderwind. And uh, Holly and her team have been doing this for over 30 years, and they uh, they handle all types of home loans. And they work with a lot of different lenders. And like we always say, if you are thinking about buying a house, it's a big decision, right? Buying a house. Or building a house. Or building a house. It's going to cost you some money. For most people, the house is about the most expensive, least in the top two most expensive things uh, you're going to ever buy. And so you want to get a pre-approval letter before you start um, the uh, rat race of, of looking for houses. And sometimes you could find yourself in a competitive situation. Uh, that's still going on. Uh, and even despite you know the higher interest rates that are out there, people are still sometimes competing for houses. And uh, you want to have an Eagle Mortgage pre-approval letter in your back pocket. How do you get one? Call them or stop by the office. The office is at 114th and Dodge. You can find them online at eaglemortgagecompany.com. All right, gentlemen, uh, Google, um, who is um, uh, one of the uh, largest uh, companies in Omaha when it comes to amount of dollars invested in construction projects in the metropolitan area, had a formal announcement. Just a couple weeks ago, uh, they made an announcement that they were adding another $350 million dollars worth of uh, development into their thousand acre council bluffs campus this week they had an announcement at the existing papillion data center and said they're going to invest 1.2 billion dollars more in nebraska uh, and we we part of that would be an expansion of the papillion hundreds of millions of dollars uh, site that's already underway and then the other one was for a another Nebraska campus on the north side of Lincoln, which is just being graded, uh, the ground, the site is just being graded right now. That doesn't even include all of the stuff that they're doing at 114th and State Street in Omaha. Uh, the metro area is already, uh, as we understand it, the largest concentration of Google operations in the whole entire country. It's got to be over 2,000 uh, acres co- collectively, and and that's about three square miles between uh, among Council Bluffs, Omaha, and Lincoln. Yeah, it's pretty darn impressive. It, it's amazing because it seems like just a few years ago we were talking about how do we attract data centers to the metro area, and now it's everywhere you turn you see a data center. Yeah, that, so, w- 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 the answer to that question apparently was answered. Yes. <laughs> so it, I had the, the good fortune, I had the building 2008 in La Vista, the, the Tenderheart Treasures building, about 300,000 square feet, and I put it on the market, and I called uh, Richard Beyer who, at the time, who was the state economic development director, and Toby Churchill, uh, in blessed memory, uh, head of Surrey County Economic Development Corporation. And both of them said, well, we, we got somebody coming to look for land for data centers. And they sent me a, a non-disclosure agreement and had Yahoo at the top of it. So we did the first data center, sold them a 300,000 square foot building. They put about $200 million into it. It's still there. Near 108th and, and, and Giles Road. And since that time, Omaha has been a hotbed because of the inexpensive utilities, the the you know water and electricity, and the workforce. And uh, we're we're very fortunate. I wonder how much what percentage of Google searches come through the Omaha Blade servers. <laughs> I would love to know that. I've, it's so funny you you ask that. I've wondered the exact same question. Now that we have so much Google presence in. Uh, Eastern Nebraska and Western Iowa. How much does you know? Because I have them all over the world. Uh, but on uh, on another note, demolition is just about ready to start at. Uh 46th to 48th Street, south side of Dodge. Um, this is one of these um, really cool transit-oriented developments, big multifamily projects, 330 apartment units that are popping up uh, and are anticipated to continue to pop up in, in Midtown, partly because of our new transit and partly because of Med Center expansion. But Brad, um, this one we've been talking about for a couple of years, but finally this week, the, the barricades are going around and and this involves the removal of an eyesore old vacant gas station 
a couple commercial buildings and quite a few single family houses. Yeah, it's a actually a project we've been working on at ENA for the last couple of years. I've been uh, involved in it, and it's it's really cool to see the transformation on a, a re, uh, redevelopment project like this. I went out earlier this year and I photographed the whole entire block from all the different sides uh, to have the before pictures. So I'll have a really cool before and after when it's done. Shout out to our friends at Access Commercial, right? That that has been working on this project. I, yeah, it is. Uh, okay. And this I, is the one that's going to preserve the old Pittman yeah. veterinary building, turn it into kind of like the office space of the complex. And when you look at the renderings of this thing, it is going to have a presence on Dodge Street. Yeah, it'll be a, a really nice building right on the south side of Dodge. And the Pittman building, like you said, is on the National uh, Historic Register. So it'll be saved as like the leasing office and fitness center. And the new building will adjoin to it. It's nice seeing uh, a lot of these areas that are kind of blighted, whether uh, uh, officially or, or actually, that just need to be restored. And, and we're putting density and, yeah. and, and, and we're, we're going vertical. And it's exactly what the urban core plan is, although that's, this is just ever so slightly outside the urban core, but it's definitely on the urban spine uh, if there's such a thing in Omaha. So that is your news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. You can find them at eaglemortgagecompany.com. We're going to take our first break of the hour, and when we come back, it's time for you to get your questions answered about Omaha growth and development. The phone number is 402-558-1110. Let's say you drive around town and you think to yourself, what are they building there? Or um, I wish we had this in town, or why don't we have that? Or what's the uh, timeline for this project? We may or may not know it, but uh, we're going to take our best stab at it. So the phones are open. Uh, Roger Olson from KFAB is manning the phones for us this morning. So you get to say hi to Roger when you call in, and we hope to hear from you. We'll be uh, coming back with those uh, questions and answers right after this. Uh, I have a break on News Radio 1110 KFAB. It was really not the most smooth sit-down I've ever heard. I've talked to usually smooth lockout. Yeah, my lockout was almost, they've been working that I struggled a lot with it. Well, initially came that way. Grow over, which really worked a lot. I forgive myself. But I'll do that. I like Jason. Jason Zeeland had a great panel on housing for the series. I assume there was several people. Two rooms down there. It was kind of quiet yesterday. Was that your area location? I'm sorry, was that growing? Oh, no, it's CRE. There's usually a whole convoy of people there. There's people, there. people I only see at CRE, so I'm kind of fun every year. Dale Slonico was down there, uh, there kicking, and, and he owns, you know, Bel Air. It's the Bel Air guy. Yeah. 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 We met with him like 20 years ago. Yeah, uh, nice guy. For some uh, thing we were pitching or proposing. The Bel Air shopping center? Yeah. His mother was Joan of Arc, basically. I mean, like she built, like, I think, Trenwood and Parkside, and um, a lot of developments, and it's called the Madeline Jacobson Company, and uh, he's got a, a really cool brother named Dwayne, who's, who's special needs, that, that, that they're both got to be well in their 80s. Did you have something in the news that was about OPPD? Home Services Ambassador Real Estate. Sound like it may be huge with Daniel yeah, and longer term project. Easily. Yeah, it may have been last. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like it. At least he read it. Anyway, no, no, it was this week. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's what Craig wants to talk about. Uh, I had that. Oh, yeah. He's oh, he's going to be probably going to bitch about uh, race and crazy. He didn't sound like that. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sure. Sure. For the love of God, we can't hear. And then, would you just, in general, there's something being built at 42nd and L? Oh, Starbucks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the construction the update. What was that guy's name? Yeah, I should have watched What's the Brad Williams construction uh, update. You guys have been in the show. Andy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, so I'll address Andy's question what's, first, what's and we'll put show? on Craig. So it's usually a yep. two-day weekend or three-day weekend for a show. Most of them are two. It's if you sell if you sell a lot of work to do everything in one day. That's set up. You sell eight, uh, If you sell eight nice-sized pieces, is that a great? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Oh, I was gonna tell you. Uh, you know how like this month 
the, uh, when we posted the, the Brad Williams construction video update on Facebook, it didn't get the normal traffic that it is. You know what I think we need to do? Don't post that photograph that has all of the Gromaha graphics in it. Take a still photograph from the construction thing and just do that. Yeah. I think what happens is because the of the logo. None of those. None of those. None of those ones that have like the Gromaha thing with like the video clips and all that get any opens at all. Um, or just very few. So show a project. I think just a regular project photo. That Gromaha, about, and then I bet you'd have over a hundred okay. likes and all that. Okay, this one's getting up there eventually. Yeah, yeah. but I, but, but not anywhere slow. near what it no. used to do and should do. Yeah. No. Mike. <coughs> okay, and what? Where'd you say it was? You dropped out the there. Okay. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals at your service sitting next to Trenton Magid and Brad Williams. Brad from ENA Consulting and Brad Williams Photography. The show is brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DM Roofing and Siding. It is the call in show. We do this about once a quarter, maybe a little lot more often than that. Phone number is 402 558 1110. I got a couple callers, but there was one person that just wanted to ask a question and um, not necessarily stick around. And that was Andy having a question about 42nd and L Street. What's going on there? That is a Starbucks that is under development at 42nd Shocker. and L. Um, and uh, that was also highlighted in the, the recent Brad Williams August uh, construction update video, which you can find at growomaha.com. Show is brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DM Roofing. And uh, with Dingman's, they are the company that you want to call anytime you get a little fender bender or scratches yeah. and scrapes and door dings or, or an oil change. More serious stuff. Yep, they do full service mechanical stuff for metro area locations. All right, to the phones we go. And Craig was the first caller. Good morning, Craig, and welcome to Grow Omaha. Good morning, yeah, Jeff, Trenton, and Brad. And what a wonderful show you guys have every every Saturday. It's must listen for us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate what that. A service. Well, I'm just reading your newsletter. I read that every week, too. And one question I got for you, that Jim Rose had a wonderful Rosie Dianozzi about OPPD and that the board was going to be doing a vote on what kind. Uh, in your newsletter, uh, you have that the board had approved a plan last week to add more electrical generation, but we're wondering what kind of generation that is. Is it going to be more useless windmills and solar panels that wear out real quick because they're going to be investing billions on this and raising our rates up to 3% a year? Or could it be something like nuclear power that is uh, very efficient? Craig, Do you for, happen to know what, they, what type of power they voted on? Yeah, Craig, um, they're they're like yeah. a lot of utilities. They're mixing it up a bit. My guess is you'll see a lot of natural gas generation. Uh, they have two natural um, gas uh, fired plants that are under construction right now. They're definitely moving away from coal. In fact, at the aforementioned conference yesterday that Trenton and I attended, Creighton University Professor Ernie Goss did a great presentation. At one point, he pointed out that last year in the United States, there were zero coal-fired uh, power plants that were constructed. There were 120, some in China. So so we're definitely going in, in a different direction. The other thing is OPPD is you know doing wind and solar and all that, but it seems like um, rather than coal, they're focused more on natural gas for their, their reliable you know baseline stuff that you can always count on, more so than coal. And I know it's controversy, controversy but um, if you check the press over the last couple of years, and I'm pretty sure that they've acquired a lot of lands, especially in Sarpy County, to eventually do solar panels. And and I, I realize people say, well, if the sun isn't shining, how does that work? But they also have natural gas backup and that kind of stuff. But so I, I think you're going to see see a push towards solar, and hopefully they'll, they'll that'll perfect itself more. And I understand a lot of people are 
uh, not big fans of the coal thing, but I personally hope they hang on to that coal plant for a while, uh, just because uh, you know we're, we're we're doing fewer and fewer of them, and and there are things that you can do with smokestacks to mitigate the amount of particulates that come out of coal fired plants, but it's so reliable, and and that's one thing, Brad. We want to make sure we do is to, and to keep Omaha's competitive advantages be have our power be so reliable, reliable, and the nice thing is. The coal is so close to Nebraska. I mean, it's right across the border in Wyoming. So yeah. it's, it is a nice a resource for us. More efficient, too, to where it's not. Yeah, I'm off the, I've been off the air. No, you're, yeah, no, no, you're still there. Your yeah. phone's breaking up, yeah. though. But your phone's right. Oh, I'm still here? Yeah, yeah. we're going to. Well, okay, real, real fast, sorry, we're, almost, we're running out of time, Craig, but if you have something else to say real fast, go ahead. Well, just real quickly, you know, Jim Rose pointed out in his uh, nosy D, Rosie D and nosy, too, how the short lifespan of these solar panels, and they end up in the dumpster so quick, which makes a lot of sense. And then they've come in advances with coal energy, even, that it's so much more efficient and non-polluting. Um, but nuclear is something they really should be looking at, and they're so afraid to do it. Nuclear is advanced light years compared to what it used to be in the days where they had where it had waste. I mean, they could resell the waste now. Yeah. I, don't, I wish they'd be looking at nuclear. Well, I, I, I would I would agree with that, and uh, if we had more time, we could jump into that. Craig, we yep. appreciate the call. Um, okay, Mike and Jeff, please stay on the line because we're going to take our middle of the show break for the news. But Mike and Jeff will be the the first two guys uh, to uh, be on the docket. But after them, it's open for you. And the phone number is 402-558-1110, 402-558-1110. You're listening to Jeff Beals, Trenton Magid, and Brad Williams on Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and D&M Roofing and Siding. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Tired of walking into a Much dull and uninspiring workspace? So, uh, Mike Evans, Mayor of Gretna, sent me a nice email saying, yeah, you guys are absolutely right about um, getting people to, to, to come here. And he said he all the time in Gretna, he talks to people from the coast and everything that are moving here. And um, so it's, we are seeing it, seeing it happen. But there's no reason why money and effort and organized recruitment shouldn't be out there. I mean, think about it. Think about it. If, if, if the Walter Scott Foundation or somebody like that, or, or a consortium. That's really what I think Heritage Omaha should be concentrating on. The guy, in addition to other things, the guy who was on that uh, panel at the end of the day that we were talking about, Brad, you might remember this trend uh, from Heinz, said that 28 percent of their residents in the new Brickline complex are from out of state. Oh, wow. That's really? pretty good. Yeah. 28 percent. Because they can That's afford it. It's cheap housing for them. <laughs> yeah. You're, 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 but he's also the, he's also the guy that said organically. Which that's what he meant, but yeah. but organically to me sounds like it, it's it's kind of a it's it's something that's great, but it's it's slow. Yeah. Did did he say anything about any other buildings coming up? Yeah. Down there? there was one point in time he kind of hinted about it, like he had made some comment that he was talking about how he believed in Omaha and the investments he's making, and he's like, there's a and he made something we're going to be investing a lot more, but that was about the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no timelines or yeah, because there have been rumors floating around about some substantial buildings uh, in that area. Oh, like, even their little packet has you the eight-story, yeah. seven, eight-story mass timber. No, another building. hotel. Is, yeah. is, aren't they moving some stuff by the park to, towards the tour on the Conagra campus? Um, to the east of their building now, isn't there a construction site, or is that just a it's holding the, area for what they're working on? getting ready for it. Like, because this, uh, when you look at the packet that they have, they have one version of this seven-story mass timber building on that site. Then the packet also shows a rendering of it um, right on 10th Street, yeah. uh, north of Embassy Suites, and and then then there have been a lot of rumors about. Um, like a W hotel, like that. But that rumor of a W hotel on, on that site goes back to before the pandemic. Oh, wow. We were hearing we were hearing people talk about that before the pandemic. Well, isn't there a piece of land which I think it's kind of sits by itself? It's kind of a loner, but uh, the um, Riverfront Towers. Yeah, I love how it says Riverfront Towers or whatever, and then behind it it has all the all the release valves for the the chemicals from Aaron Ferrin's sons. We were seeing that, like, you know, the two towers. 
We're not disparaging the property, but yeah. go ahead. <laughs> you know how the, the towers, you got those townhomes. I'm sure you're they, perfectly they, safe living there. Yeah, that, but like, you know, it gets like this release valve and stuff. It, it reminds you like, it reminds you like the Simpsons, like uh, Montgomery Burns or whatever. Is it, sorry. Excellent. But but it's like, seriously, you don't have We're not liable. We're not liable in anyone. So, you're talking about the, the circle drive for the pedestrian bridge, right by there? Don't yeah. sue us. Well, you got those two towers. Yeah. But it's just a fact. I'm not, I'm not saying. No, but there's also a whole bunch of Great. sewer stuff there, too, that go with that building. And maybe that's it, but, but it. But there, there is these pipes coming because on the ground. Because remember, during the flood, they had to build that giant riverfront tower, sewer, uh, tower. water slide. They built that huge, like football field-sized water slide for the storm water to be pumped up over the levee oh, and out into the yeah, river. Yeah, because that all comes out of that same building that signed Omaha. Huh. Yeah, um, I don't think it's all. Because wasn't that? Because wasn't that? It's not like a landfill where they have to release. Because that was lead that they encased. Well, yeah. we're gonna find out. People listen to the. Uh, <laughs> The like the, burrito, the, the the they called it the burrito that yeah. they wrapped the lead. I was thinking all that stuff was for the storm sewer yeah. discharge. Yeah, it's like basically under Lewis and Clark Landing is all the in, in, encapsulated entombed lead. Yeah, yeah. So um, something else they were going to say said yesterday. So we were talking. To, oh, about. Uh, the Mercantile and all that. Like, if, if it is true that, like, a W Hotel or something like that wants to go down there, I'd rather see it, like, on the old UP site. Like, you yeah. do a mixed use building, like, you have a few, you have a floor or two of retail and, and amenities and all that. You have a few floors of office. Then you have uh, an upscale hotel. This then you the, have floors of apartments and floors of, of uh, condos and penthouses. Does the city have an RFP out for that yet? Or is it just I, still? I was under the understanding that it was going to come out this summer, but I've never heard I never saw anything, anything about it coming out. Yeah, and there have been. Uh, uh, I thought it was going to come out in June, um, hmm. but uh, a certain high-ranking city official told me it might it would be coming out in June, and I don't believe it has yet. Okay. Yeah. Did Arun very, say anything? Ranking. He was really eloquent uh, about a start date on. No. Pacific? He didn't say anything? Uh, not that I, I don't think he did. Did he trim? Uh, he didn't no. say. Okay. Um, he did make some reference to talking to grocers and things they say to grocers. I'm sure that's a tough poll. Um, yeah. You know, one, one of the things he mentioned. Well, but he has a time limit, right? For the city? You um, think? I think there is, yeah. You'd have to like pull so, hard on yeah. the grocers. And then, but he talked about, it was interesting. He mentioned this when we interviewed him on Gromaha a while back, and he mentioned it again. Yesterday he goes, he goes, basically this development has its own freeway off ramp. Yeah. And you think about it, because they built that ramp originally, as I understand it, to serve the Civic. Yeah. Because you had 10,000 people going there at one time. But you think about it, it makes perfect sense that, you know, the development has its own off ramp. My guess. I could be wrong, but my guess is those have nothing to do with... Uh, Aaron Ferrisons. It's probably something else. Because Aaron Ferrisons was lead. You wouldn't want the lead gas yeah, to come out, would you? Kind of yeah. Like lead doesn't off gas. To the <laughs> release valves. Yeah. I don't. I wouldn't smoke around there. I know that. <laughs> and the fact that does this work? And if some green vapors ever come out, don't do it. This works. Yeah. What do you want? Four, four, four. Uh, oh, I was just gonna look. You can pull up the sewers on the GIS site. We can, I can do that later, though. I think that's a good later project. Yeah, look at that. That doesn't look like it's just a normal. I just think it's funny. Like, river front place. So right outside the West Side Football Stadium, the MUD has like some kind of natural gas uh, valves and stuff all stick. Uh -huh. And anytime you walk by, it's just hissing. Like, yeah. you're just yeah. like, oh, I hope this thing don't blow. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here, folks. Please disperse. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. Grow old during that break. Yeah, so okay. long. Jesus.
And back to Grow Omaha, Jeff Beals, Trenton Magid, and Brad Williams. It's the quarterly call-in show, 402-558-1110, 402-558-1110. Uh, we're brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and D&M Roofing and Siding. Uh, call D&M for your residential or commercial roofs, of course, siding as well. And remember, it's not just repair with them. Uh, for commercial roofs, they have an amazing preventative maintenance program. All right, it's time for the Commercial Real Estate Development Spotlight of the Week, which is brought to you by Noddle Companies. Uh, Noddle Companies, premier real estate developer based right here in Omaha, doing things nationwide. Lots of projects here in Omaha. And as we mentioned earlier, Sam Noddle from Noddle Companies was on a very interesting panel at yesterday's Commercial Real Estate Summit in downtown Omaha. And he talked a lot about... Um, an amenity uh, going into the Builders District, a really cool pocket park. But we also wanted to give you another update from the Builders District. This is a Noddle Company's project in North Downtown, just west of Charles Schwab Field, a uh, four-story brick building that had been occupied by Saul's. I think Saul's uh, Pawn and uh, Jewelry and Pawn and all that used it for storage. Uh, That building has come down. I think there's Uh, a few buildings there, isn't there, that are going to come down? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, that was the only one, but maybe I'm off on that one. Okay. Okay. I could be. But I know I this one. Off. This one's coming down. And uh, when I was there a couple days ago, it was probably half gone. So maybe by now it's it's gone all the way. Uh, but the Builders District continues to grow and expand. It is anchored by uh, Kiewit's World Headquarters. Uh, there's also a hotel there, some other Kiewit University, and, and many more projects to come. And that is your Commercial Real Estate Development Spotlight of the Week, brought to you by Noddle Companies. You can find out more about uh, Noddle Companies uh, by looking at their Facebook page or going to noddlecompanies.com. All right, uh, Mike, you have waited a long time. We thank you for your patience, and welcome to Grow Omaha. Hey, guys. Thanks for the time today. Can you talk a little bit about what you think will happen to the lot just east of the new mutual development? Right now it's being used as storage, but it seems to me like in the future that will likely be some of the most viable real estate in, uh, in Omaha. Yeah. I, thanks for the call, Mike. I, I think that and the former UP site, uh, 14th and Dodge, are, are both valuable sites. That site, part of the deal was that Mutual is going to own that, and the idea was for future expansion. And I'm sure they'll dress it up once the construction is done in 2026. They'll, they'll, they'll clean that site up. I don't know if it'll be part of the park temporarily or what. And, and hopefully, if they don't need it, they'll listen to reason. And another uh, vertical project can happen there. Mutual did say toward the beginning of the construction that um, when, they, when the building's done and if they're not ready to build on it, they would kind of do a placeholder thing that would make it look somewhat park-like and attractive. So that would be fine. Um, but my, my guess is that uh, down the road, not too far from now, Mutual will want that space and they'll build something there. I also wouldn't be surprised if the building was part residential or if Mutual didn't need it. It would be a great, great spot for an apartment or condo building with the tremendous views um, of the downtown riverfront. The other thing to keep in mind is the streetcar will run right along the south side of that property. And um, I also wouldn't be surprised, you guys, if the um, ugly uh, state office building, which is right to the south of that site, only three stories, looks like a prison, um, I would love to see that building demolished and replaced by something way taller and, and way more substantive. Wouldn't be shocked if that happens down the road either. But we appreciate the call, Mike, and thanks for your patience. Another guy who has been patient, and we appreciate it, is Jeff, who has a question about the streetcar. Good morning, Jeff, and welcome to the show. Uh, hello, guys. Hey, with with Nebraska doing all these tax, you know, cuts, corporate, personal, and with us doing the streetcar, how do you think that's going to impact growth into the state? Because I've noticed, um, you know who Art Lafford is. Uh-huh. Uh, he has said states that are reducing taxes and investing back into their communities that's where the growth is happening. And another question, just quick, when are you going to have Jay Noddle back on to talk about updates of what's going on with the streetcar? I know you can see it online, but, you know, it's always more interesting to get it from him. Well, addressing the second part of that question first, Jeff, uh, good question and good idea. We'll reach out to Jay and see if we can get him booked 
uh, sometime this fall. We've got a lot of the shows already booked, but uh, yeah, we are overdue for having Jay on the show. And he's welcome anytime. Um, he's yeah one of the most knowledgeable guests that we, we have on the show periodically. Back to your first question, I would agree with what Art Laffer said. I mean, the things that attract people include uh, lower taxes, include lots of amenities and quality of life things, great jobs and, and all that. And I think while we're far from perfect, we're doing a lot right. Uh, some of these tax cuts lately do help Nebraska uh, be more competitive. The thing I like about the streetcar is that it's a different kind of pull factor. When it creates a, a lot of urban density, it creates a lot of activity that's considered fun and enjoyable. The more connective the place is, the, the better off it is. And generally, if you look at great cities, um, and if you look at great cities in, in sure. states that have a lower tax burden, um, not only do those cities benefit from the advantageous tax environment, but their downtown cores or their center cores are strong and, and have things to do and are desirable, not only for people to live and work there, but for suburbanites to hang out there on the weekends and for convention planners to uh, choose them for meeting locations and, and you know weekend tourism and all that sort of thing. And as Jeff mentioned during the break, the, the, the gentleman from Hines, the, the, the Brickline property down 10th Street, that he said 28% of the new move-ins on all those apartments uh, are from out of state. And so that, that's a good start. We, as we've been talking about the whole show, we need to, to work harder to bring our population base up and stuff. And then as a side note, I wonder if alcohol consumption along the streetcar line will increase since people aren't driving. I, my guess is that it would increase increase substantially i mean one of the <laughs> one of the best things about the streetcar is that you can uh, you know go and have a good time and if you live nearby it or your hotel's nearby it you don't have to worry about getting a dui i mean i think uh, that's actually one of the benefits of that sort of just like uber and lyft one of the benefits of that yep. is you have fewer duis uh, good call jeff we appreciate that and um, we're going to take our last question, uh, but this person maybe had a little bit of stage fright. Uh, Marla didn't want to go on the air, but uh, she had a question about the old Shopco at 144th and West Center Road, uh, wondering if it's going to be a car wash. So All what right, do we know I've, about the old Shopco? I've got that. I've, I've, I've talked. There's a couple of owners of that property. And what's nice is you, you see a lot of... Um, pods or whatever they call them, uh, storage containers out there. Uh, VASA, V-A-S-A uh, Fitness, which is a regional or national, it's a 60,000 square foot gym. Um, they're, they're already working on it. It'll be a while before they open. That's 60,000 on the west side. The 30,000, there's a lot of rumors. You can look up building permits. Uh, Brad found building permits and stuff. So far, the, the rumors are it's an indoor car wash, but you also have a car wash that's 0.48 miles around the corner on 140th and Center, just north. And it's yet to be seen whether that is going to be an indoor car wash or something else. And so I, I don't think it's been determined yet. There's a gas station, QT, right in front on the corner that they sold to, and uh, we have to wait and see what's going to be there. I have two questions about car washes, guys. The first one is, how long before we ever have an intersection in Omaha that has a competing car wash on all four corners? Secondly, what's going to happen to all these car washes when they go the route of the frozen yogurt craze and they all close? Like, remember, like 10 years ago, every week on Grow Omaha, we would uh, mention a new frozen yogurt shop in town. And then now only a few of them around. Is, is that what's going to happen to all these car washes? Are they the frozen yogurt of the current day? Well, there's no question. And, and someone who's done about five car washes, and, and by that I mean Tommy's Express locations, Tommy's definitely is the best. And I don't say that just because two of my clients are Tommy's franchisees, but uh, <laughs> definitely good progress. The best line I ever heard, and, and I always say that the reason we have so many car washes is it's a liquid business. Thank you. And then the other thing is um, – what hap someone asked me, he said, what happens when we get the self-cleaning cars? That could be a blow to the industry. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we're going to take our final break of the hour, and when we come back, it'll be time for the Turner Construction Lightning Round. And I'm looking at the list, and I see quite a few things on it. Restaurant news, retail news, national retailers coming in to the marketplace, all sorts of stuff. (laughs) So you're listening to Grow Omaha. We got Brad Williams here with us, and we always have Jeff and Trenton. And we're brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and D&M Roofing and Siding. Back shortly on News Radio 1110 KFAB. I don't know if it came across your headphones, but you told Jeff good question, and I went. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's not that. It's, I missed. I it. know. I screwed it up. I you thought about it as soon as I did that. I missed it. Yeah. I totally missed that. Though. <laughs> That's great. I'll do that during the CRE summit too. The, the self-cleaning car. I love that. Self-cleaning car. That's not going to be good. Yeah. But they are still popping up. Everywhere. I mean, they're, they're severing, and the money that's pumped into these. Private equity money is unbelievable. Someone told me, like, back in the day, one of the chains here in town, you pay whatever, $15, $17 for a car wash, and it actually costs the gas station, like, 74 cents Everybody, or something. Now, that, that number, I've heard 34 cents, I've heard a dollar and a quarter. So, what, what's interesting... Wait, it does use a good amount of water. So, what, what's interesting is, like, it's like, oh, yeah, well. on, on the, yeah. the franchise, like, if there's a couple different franchise owners, like I say in Sarpy or Douglas, a lot of those models will say, okay, say it's $32, and you sign up at a location northwest. Yeah. So that $32, if you don't use it or you use that car wash, all the money goes to that franchisee. But if you sign up over here, but then you use the other franchisee's location, they get the most money. There's like a settlement transaction for that $32 for the month. Uh, and so, Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and same thing if, 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 if you use... If, if you use a car wash from another franchisee in Kansas City, when you're in Kansas City, then someone will go to Kansas City, whatever. But, I, you know, I, I hear the best feedback for Tommy's. I hear that tidal wave, those two on Dodge Street, aren't, there's not a lot of traffic. You just sit there and watch. There's not a lot of traffic through those. Um, but you've got club car wash. You've got all the rocket car washes. You've got uh, uh, Russell Speeders. Um, who, the Duchess or who, oh, gas oh, station car There's watchers. one called um, Take 5 that's going up on Blair High Road in front of Walmart. That's a like oil change. It's a car wash, too. It is? Yeah. Car, yeah. Oh. And, and sorry, right, guys. That's the largest go. car wash. You have about four and a half. It's like four car wash of America. We're going to talk fast, okay, boys? Yeah. Let's work it. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals, Trenton Maggot, and Brad Williams with you. This is the Turner Construction Lightning Round brought to you by Turner Construction. I tell you what, Turner is um, doing small projects, medium projects, and big projects. If you want a big project that they're doing right now, uh, they were just chosen by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers uh, to do a $380 million uh, project at Offutt Air Force Base. Big stuff making America safe, uh, keeping our Air Force and our military in good shape. That's the type of stuff Turner can do, but they can also do your build out. And so if you're thinking about uh, uh, building a, you know, a better space for a retail shop or office renovations, or you need to build a building for your building that's small, medium, big, whatever, they can do all of that and they do an outstanding job of it. You know, and, and usually when it, comes to that, there you go. when it comes to that off at Air Force Base project, uh, Turner is on base. Usually they're off base, but in this case, they're on base, Jeff. You got it. And uh, we appreciate Turner Construction for being our uh, Gromaha Lightning Round sponsor. All right, lots of stuff going on. First of all, Hale Varsity Club in uh, the Southport area of La Vista is changing its name to Herdat Sports heard that. Bar and Grill. I heard that too. Uh, the restaurant had been, has been closed this week and will reopen Monday. Guys, if you. Um, have a furry friend, a dog, and you want your dog to enjoy a really cool bar, restaurant, a recreational activity alongside you while you have a beer and something to eat, uh, Bar K might be coming to Omaha. Uh, they're looking at the city as a possible expansion site. Uh, these are two to four acre sites, uh, big outdoor play area, bar, restaurant, that sort of thing. Uh, for owners and dogs, they have locations in Kansas City, St. Louis, and Oklahoma. All right. I just got that, by the way. 
Bark. I read the newsletter bark. a couple times. K yeah, bark. bark. Thank you. Ancho and Agave, that huge restaurant going into the former Pier 1 space in Village Point. We now have an opening date Monday, September 11th. This is interesting. We have a new restaurant at 70th and Grover Street called Nebraska Del Peru. I'm excited. And they serve Venezuelan food. Just kidding. It's Peruvian food. <laughs> and uh, so we'll have to go give that a try. Perspire Sauna Studios plans to open a second metro area location at 181st and Wright Street. Uh, the existing location is at 144th and West Maple. But basically, you go in and you get a spa, I mean a sauna to yourself. This is a chain, though, out of California, 42 locations in 17 states. First of all, we just called it Perspire. I thought it was on Ripe Street. Nah, no, it's a Perspire. You perspire inside that yeah, sort of thing. You're definitely going to be ripe. Hey, um, everyone talks about uh, the Mercado, that butcher shop in Lincoln that has the certified Piedmontese beef. They now have an Omaha location, 162nd and West Maple Road. Um, and they're they eventually planning on adding a uh, in store cafe in there as well. Uh, Julio's, the reincarnation of Julio's, didn't last very long. Um, they had one store in uh, Miracle Hills that's been closed for a while. It is going to become a New England uh, style restaurant. Well, now they just closed their Tex Mex restaurant at 192nd and Q Street. Uh, they're saying on Facebook, though, that uh, they may open a smaller space next year at a yet-to-be-announced location. That's a competitive uh, space, the Mexican food restaurants. That's tough. Um, Happy Buddha's uh, is a uh, Asian fusion restaurant going in uh, to uh, 36th and Twin Creek Drive in Bellevue. Um, that's according to our colleague Brian Thomas at NAI and P. Dodge, who did that deal. And uh, Trenton and Brad... Creighton University men's basketball has renewed for another 10 years at the CHI Health Center Omaha. Those stats that you put on the newsletter are awesome. And those stats are uh, a grand total of 5.12 million fans have attended Creighton games since they started playing in that building in 2003. 15,000 plus per contest, top 10 in attendance. 103 of those are mine. Music is playing, which means we're done. Brad, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. I always enjoy it. Brad Williams of ENA Consulting and Brad Williams Photography. That's it for this week. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center. Center, DNM Roofing and Siding, and Turner Construction. Back next week at 9 o'clock, right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media, this is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.